is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. All right, hey, there he is, the man, the myth, the legend. How you feeling, my man? You feeling good? I'm good. Big O, you hit on a, uh, on a really important point uh, just before the break there, which is this should not be anybody's semifinal week coming up, right? Uh, it, 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 like, it's this really is when you should be settling you. championships. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is absolutely true. Um, yeah, obviously, the, the downside of that is, of course, we get to week 18 and all of a sudden, like, the Eagles aren't starting anybody. Maybe, you know, you, you can have the best teams with the with the best fantasy assets all of a sudden deciding to sit everybody because they've clinched everything that there is to clinch. I, I just, I hate to see fantasy seasons come down to that. I don't feel like the final week of the season should be involved in fantasy in any way. So you are, you are so right to point that out. I am with you, brother. Uh, by the way, is, uh, how, how, if you got a keeper dynasty league, how's the uh, Tua uh, acquisition looking? <laughs> yeah, that's it. Well, you know, at, at some level, uh, you, you want to say that, that like, this is the week to acquire somebody like that because, it, you know, nobody's ever, nobody's ever like as good as their best moments or as, as bad as their lowest moments, right? The truth of every player is somewhere in between those things. He, he, he was never, you know, going to just settle in as being the guy that you saw in the Baltimore game. And he's not, you know, he's not going to settle in as being the guy that you just saw against Green Bay. Um, I made a couple of atrocious throws. There's, there's no getting around it, right? Like, I, oh. I, I've, I've seen the play now like 10 times. I have no idea if he was throwing a Gusecki or to Hill. Um, just, a, just a couple balls that got away from him. Um, but you know, the, the idea that he's not, I mean, they've, they've built the team around what he can and can't do. They built the offense around his skills. And I, I would expect that to remain in place. You know, and the nice thing about the NFL, there's always a, you know, you've always got a game ahead of you where you can, where you can, you know, sort of redeem. shake the etch a sketch. Yeah. You can redeem. So let's, uh, let's hope, uh, he can redeem himself because he's got two enormous weeks uh coming up and uh it's just kind of typical that they're gonna back in if they're actually going to uh make the playoffs don't forget to smash the hell out of the like button while you're watching there and uh let's uh if you got any questions send them in right now on the youtube chat board or on our twitter page at big o show that's another way that you can uh send in your questions uh or comments that you have in fantasy football so uh Jahan Dotson is he a uh priority waiver pickup in fantasy this week yeah I, I thought he was last week um and I, I featured him in our pickups column like the guy's a star I don't <laughs> I don't know how else to really put it at this point right like he's early in the season you were seeing the contested catch ability and you were seeing the red zone ability um you, you know but on low volume right? Like they weren't targeting him more than like three times a game. He would pop on those three targets because he's great. Um, but then, you know, since coming back from injury, he's, you know, this is, this is 20 plus targets over the last three weeks. He's seeing seven, he's eight not, targets a game. He's not rostered like heavily. Like that's the weirdest no, thing. Pa part of this, part of this is that we're down to the point in the season where there's only like, you know, four teams in your league that are active. And then there's only two teams that are active. So those teams are probably stacked. So they're not necessarily looking at the waiver wire, but um, it, it, Dotson's great. Like, and you could you could see it coming into the league. He's just a he's just a contested catch winner. Um, he's a he's a great route runner, good separator. And even when he doesn't separate, like he'll outfight you for the ball. And and the Commanders obviously recognized that right away, and they were targeting him in the in the red zone right away. He he's got seven touchdowns in ten games, and he just got it done against the Niners. Like he, you know, you you do it against that defense, you can pretty much do it against anybody. Um, I, yeah, I I think he's great. I think he's somebody that I'm probably going to be ranking as a wide receiver two or a, a very high end wide receiver three. Um, he's been playable for a while, and he should be rostered almost everywhere. You got the balls to start Shane Zylstra or whatever the hell his name is, huh? Huh, buddy? You got the balls to do that? Nope. 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 I sure, sure don't, sure don't have those balls. Um, it, it's funny there, this whole season, there's been a tight end. Every Nobody week. started that dude, by the way. No, no, certainly not. And he's, you know, it, this is going to be like, you know, all, all year there's been some random cult. There's been, you know, there's been some like 
wild tight end who just stumbles into a couple of touchdowns each week. Remember the season opened with OJ Howard having a couple of touchdowns. He played like three snaps, scored two touchdowns, right? Like this is going to happen at this position. It's a part of the reason why it's such a super frustrating position is I would love to, you know, maybe maybe in the, in the year end, when we look back at tight end, I would love to know how many total touchdowns were scored by tight ends um, who were 0% started, right? Because that happens constantly. That happens all the time. Um, been a brutal year for the position. I'm actually, I'm, I'm more than ever in favor of just folding it into wide receiver, right? And just, just having a bunch of spots where you're starting wide receivers or tight ends. Um, because the, the problem, and I believe you and I have talked about this, is that the tight ends that we're using in fantasy are actually really just slot receivers. They're wide receivers, right? They're almost never in line. They're almost never asked to block. Mark Andrews isn't blocking anyone. I mean, you guys see it in Miami, like Mike Kosicki doesn't block anyone, you know, like guys like Alan Lazard get used as much as blockers as Mike Kosicki does. It just doesn't happen. Um, these guys are wide receivers. They're wide receivers of a slightly different dimension and they spend a lot more of their time in the slot, but they're wide receivers. And I feel like we got to treat them that way. There are, there are still traditional tight ends, right? There's tight ends that find themselves in the backfield. There's tight ends that function almost all the time as like left tackles basically. Um, and, and as enhancements to your offensive line, but then there's the guys we start in fantasy. I mean, Travis Kelsey is a receiver. Andrews is a receiver. Hawkinson is a receiver. All these guys are receivers. Tyler Algiers, where where do we put him right now if you're uh, battling for a, uh, the semifinals or the finals here? Yeah, he's he's another guy who um, really should be rostered in in more leagues, and it's really only it, it's because he he's really erupted so late in the season that his roster percentage is still below fifty, which is kind of crazy to me because he's had. He's had a pretty significant workload all year, but he was he was in more of a 50-50 a split, you know, or kind of for a while there, it was like a 40-40-20 split, you know, with uh, with Huntley. Um, but he's emerged as the dominant back for Atlanta right now. Um, he's been among the yards after contact leaders almost all season. Like that guy does not go down unless there's a gang of defenders bringing him to the to the turf. Like he he's been he's been wonderful to watch. He's kind of exceed, you know, I was pretty bullish on him coming into the year, um, but he was coming from BYU and there's always a quality of competition issue there, right? Like, you don't, you don't really know until you see him in NFL competition and he's just looked great. Um, and, and now he's really surged ahead of Cordero Patterson in terms of snaps, in terms of touches. Uh, he's coming off a game a couple of weeks ago. He had over 130 total yards. Like he's, he's really good. And again, the first, the first defender who touches him is almost never the guy who brings him down. Um, so he's he's very fun to watch, um, and there's no more run committed team than the Atlanta Falcons, right? So, regard like we've seen them in games this year where they fall behind by three scores and they're still running the football. So you never have to worry about game flow with him either. He's just you can put it in the bank. He's going to give you. 16, 18 touches. Most of those are going to be carries. So you don't get some big PPR bump or anything like that. But he is in any given week. He's probably at this point, the Atlanta player who's most likely to score a touchdown too. So we look at the matchups for next week. Are you starting Baker Mayfield against the chargers after a sizzling night uh, last night? Well, I'll tell you, I mean, first of all, the what last night tells you is that, um, Hackett is just in over his head. Um, <laughs> that team is a team is done, right? Like that team, that team is fully checked out. Um, so I I feel like that said more about Denver than it necessarily did about the Rams. the The matchup that you'd want to play next week, but this but this relies on the Rams being able to keep it a competitive game. And who knows? Like the Chargers just fall into competitive games in situations where you don't think it should be competitive, right? But um, Cam Akers against the Chargers should be the play um, because the Chargers have been a super friendly run defense all year, all year, um, like well over five yards per carry allowed. So Cam Akers should be the guy that you'd really want to lean on there. Um, it's been it's been kind of fun watching, you know, maybe, maybe the thing with Baker is that the more the better he knows an offense, the worse he's going to be. I have no idea. Right. Like. You know, they just airlifted him in there, gave him a couple days with the playbook, and he was and he was fine um, in a primetime game. 
you know, he was better as a rookie than he's ever been in any other season. Um, so this is, this is pretty wild. Um, he's obviously got radar lock on Higby right now. I don't, you know, I don't think Baker rises to the level that you'd actually want to start him in a, in a fantasy playoff matchup. But um, Cam Akers is definitely somebody who, like a month ago, we were looking at the schedule and we were saying, wow, there's some sweet spots coming up for the Rams if only Cam Akers can produce, right? It was Green Bay. They've got they've got the Chargers uh, in championship week. He's going to be a really good play. Um, I'm uh, like, I'm thinking now I, I may end up with Cam Akers like as a top 15 running back for this week again we need the we need the game to remain competitive enough that the that the run is just in play all day for the rams but you know the chargers have a funny way of playing down to opponents they do all right so give me your top three quarterbacks going into week 17 when it comes to the matchups your favorite matchups like uh i look at uh at dak prescott that's a Super Bowl player that I would because against the Titans, I I kind of like Dak to to light him up. By the way, he he made some big time passes this week yeah. against Philadelphia. I was like, wow, those were I think those were the plays that Cowboy fans were dying to, you know. And you know, I'm glad I just mentioned this because Dak Prescott's been at this for several years now. You know, kind of trying to prove himself and put all that, and and then he's he needs these kind of moments. How many years into his career is he right now? Like five, right? Yeah, Six. yeah. Dak is actually another guy who, like, if you're if you're you know if you're really sweating the the game that Tua is coming off, like Dak is just two weeks removed from you know giving away a game to Jacksonville, right? Like, and he's that, he's. But that's he, you led me to my point is. We got people like just like this is the fucking Titanic, bro. They're just yeah, jumping right. off, and, and they're just like Leonardo DiCaprio, just floating down the ocean. <laughs> uh, like we're done, and it's like, yo, bro, this is only one year with McDaniel. A lot of people yeah. are looking at it like this is three years. No, dude, the first two years don't count. He didn't have any offensive help. This is the year that counts, and now you start to build on this. And Dak Prescott has kind of been a question mark for for Cowboys fans for a while. That might have been his watershed moment. Yeah, this, he wasn't even a, he wasn't even a question mark two weeks ago. Like they were right. mad, right? Yeah. Like I mean, he's he's piled up interceptions this season, and now he's you know he just faced a great defense and he stared him down and and had an excellent game. So that's that's kind of what I was getting at earlier when I was talking about how like you know you're never as good as your highlights and you're never really as bad as your lowlights, and the truth is always somewhere in the middle, and like. You know, it only takes it only takes one game to to completely shift the narrative on any player. So I would still be, you know, I'd still be pretty optimistic about the general trajectory of the Dolphins offense, even though, you know, you're coming off a couple of rough moments in a in a spotlight game. Um, but and you're so right to point to Dak and and and, you know, make that uh, make that point pretty clear. I This isn't going to be like my my actual top three at quarterback okay. as, as we go into week 17, because those are, you know, it's always guys like Patrick Mahomes and Josh right, Allen right, right. And, and Hurts. If he I'm, plays talking about matchups. I'm talking about but, slash QB slash matchups because yeah, that's kind so, of some of the, some of the spots where you can really, where you can really pick on some soft defenses. Um, Jared Goff is at home facing the bears. Jared Goff is a guy who's still available in probably about 20% of Yahoo leagues. Not a lot at this point, but because I think people have been eyeing this bears matchup for a while, right? Like the, Be they, the, Be the bears did their best in uh, Arctic conditions against, uh, against Josh Allen. They had some nice moments, but um, that is a severely undermanned defense right now. And I'm confident that they cannot handle, you know, DeAndre Swift and the speed of Jamison Williams and, you know, Amon Ross St. Brown. And there's just, there's too many weapons that the Lions have for them to, for them to be able to resist that. So I think Jared Goff is in for a big week. He's actually probably going to find himself in my top 10 quarterbacks this week. Um, Trevor Lawrence, who's playing extremely well and just had a pretty good game against, uh, against the Jets. Um, he gets Houston. So that's a super friendly matchup. It's, you know, the rest of the season is basically must win for the Jaguars. So I think Trevor Lawrence can go off. Like it would not surprise me if Trevor Lawrence finished with a top five fantasy week. The thing that really excited me about the Jets matchup, and again, terrible conditions and all that, but they they proactively ran with Trevor Lawrence, which has been a which has been a thing that, you know, I, I know you don't want to put a guy like that at undue risk, but he's a really good runner. 
Um, and yeah, some of his like best moments run. at Clemson were, were like long touchdown runs. Like he's not just like a, oh yeah, kind of mobile. He could get you a few yards if it's, you know, whatever. No, he's good. Like if you wanted to turn him and not that they do, but if you wanted to turn him into, you know, somebody that we were getting six, eight designed runs for each game, it would look a lot like that Jets game. And I think he would be super productive. Um, I, I can't say enough about that guy's talent. I'm, I'm, he's one of my... I love the story that they have going on right now. And I, I love the redemption for Trevor Lawrence after people were ready to give up on him, you know, after his first season under Urban Meyer and ter in terrible circumstances too, right? Uh, who else? If I had to come up with one more, it would probably be Brock Purdy. Um, Brock Purdy oh, gets, uh, again, we're not talking like my actual top three quarterbacks, um, but he's he's stepped in so perfectly for Jimmy Garoppolo. like. What did Jimmy Garoppolo do? Like every week was 220 yards and two touchdowns, right? Like a metronome, just week in, week out, regardless of opponent. The the one thing that Garoppolo was really able to do is he 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 didn't miss all the layup throws that you get in a in a Kyle Shanahan offense, right? Like Kyle Shanahan, there's only there's only a handful of plays each each week where where Shani is really asking a quarterback to make a hero throw, right? And Garoppolo was so good at making all the simple ones. He didn't make many of the hero throws, but he was really good at making all the layups. And Purdy is nailing absolutely every layup throw that you get. Like you think about the the touchdown uh this past week where George Kittle did basically all the work, right? Like he, he's had such simple um open routes to Kittle over these last couple of weeks and Kittle does the rest. And like, but but who cares, right? Like for fantasy, we get all those yards for a quarterback. Um, he's not he's not throwing a ton, so you're not going to get a lot of dropbacks there. I think he's only averaged last three weeks. Purdy, I believe, has averaged like 23 pass attempts per game. So there's not really a path to like four touchdowns or five touchdowns. He's not a guy who's going to like single handedly win your week. But you're basically guaranteed. 210, 220, 230, and two touchdowns. And he's got a little bit of rushing element to his game too. So Purdy is somebody who's just absolutely not going to fail. He's got, I sort of buried the lead there. He's also got the Raiders coming up and the Raiders will, you know, wh whatever you need, the Raiders will give to you. I'm with you there. Uh, somebody's asking Miami D or Bucks D next week. Uh, it's probably, it's uh, this is really a tough one because like, the Bucks D in in real life, very good, bunch of playmakers. But they, my problem with them for fantasy is that they've got the Panthers, and and what I believe we've talked about this before. Like what when we're making streaming decisions about defenses in fantasy, you're really just chasing dropbacks. You want you want a defense that's facing a team that's going to try to pass like forty times. Because what do we get from dropbacks? We get sacks, we get interceptions. Like even if it's a good quarterback, even if the team gives up 24 points, 28 points, we just want sacks and we want interceptions. And you can't really get that from Carolina because all they want to do is run the ball 45 times, right? Like they don't, they don't want to throw. Um, Sam Darnold is not going to drop back 30 times. So the Bucks could hold the Panthers to a low number. Um, but I, but I don't think it's a really rich, um, environment, like it just in terms of fantasy. So I would actually lean the dolphins there and I would trust Mac Jones or uh, maybe at some point they decide to pull the plug on Mac Jones, but they haven't done it yet. I would trust Mac Jones to give you the ball a few times. All right. Uh, what do you got going on this week at Yahoo? So, uh, folks can check you out leading into their playoffs. Yeah, I got the, got the pickups column coming out tomorrow. It's going to be a bunch of recycled names, but we've got a really got a really friendly defense for you to pick up um so we've got the pickups column coming out tomorrow and then a special thursday night edition just like we did last week of fantasy football live getting you set for the entire weekend follow him on twitter at andy barons catch him every week here doing his thing with our sports grill fantasy football zone andy as always thank you my brother appreciate you immensely thanks big o appreciate it you got it there you go sports grill baby Guess what? Today is Monday, and today the new Doral location is open. So now I can say eight great locations. $1.50 Bud Light drafts and bottles during the NCAA and NFL games. Tonight we got Monday Night Football. Tonight you get to enjoy $1.50 Bud Light drafts and bottles. They've added these new cocktails during the NCAA and NFL games. We've got all the bowl games going on, too. $5 for the Cherry Lemonade and the Tailgate Tea. Domestic pitchers, only $12. Bone-in wings, 15% off. 
The buttermilk chicken sandwich is delicious. The buffalo tater tots are awesome. And, you know, Sports Grill is known for a great atmosphere, great food, great service, great people, just a great sports bar here in South Florida. But you know what? They're also known for their sauces. Now you can take them home. Yeah, a lot of you love the buffalo sauce or the Miami Heat or the Blackberry, the barbecue, the Dale. They've got all those sauces now, and you can take them home. So go check out the new Doral location. Brand spanking new opens today. So get on down there, man. And it's Monday, so you can enjoy the $7 single smash burger at Sports Grill, baby. Yeah, great place to enjoy friends, family, and some fantastic food. This is the Big O Show.